Okay, so let's take a look at question 5a. Okay, the, this is an optimization question. So this is really the application of what you were learning in questions 3 and 4. Okay, so what we've given you now is we've given you our equations, which have some constraints on them. Okay, and then we're given, we've given you another equation here, which is called the cost equation. Okay, and the cost equation tells you what's the value for something being produced or consumed, okay, given the um, constraints defined by the two variables x and y here. So what you need to do here is we need to, we're going to model this situation where we plot our equations, we're going to find a common area, okay, the common solution for all these equations, and then we're going to be plugging in sort of the edge points of that solution, because remember the solution is a shape, okay, and we, we will have coordinates x and y, and out of that we can determine whether we are going to, in this case, maximize our costs, okay, or maximize our inputs in a situation, okay, or minimize this. So this is a, a type of math called linear programming, okay, where you're given these linear equations and you're also given an external um, cost equation, and from that you want to find like which what is what is the optimal condition okay or pairing of whatever quantities we're measuring here okay so in this case we're not really told what x and y represent but in questions three and four we were given um, different values of different things there that we were trying to count okay so in this question we're simply going to do the same thing here we're going to uh, plot these equations Okay, so we'll start by writing these in the point slope or the slope intercept form. So this is going to be 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 10. Okay, and then we have to divide by 2. So this is going to be negative 1 half x plus 5. Okay, that's going to be our first equation. Our second equation, okay, is going to be y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 15 okay and that already will give us our point slope form and then we're given our two other equation x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0 okay so let's start plotting what we have here so our first equation here we have an uh, y-intercept of 5 so let's just mark our units here so we'll go 5 10 15 20 and we'll go up by fives here. Okay, so it's important that you keep your scales the same so that you don't have the graphs distorted. It's just much easier for you to plot. So we have a y-intercept of five, okay, and then a rise of negative one and a run of two. Okay, so this is going to be a, a sort of a shallow line that we draw down here. Okay, and I'm gonna take this all the way down to the to the x-axis okay and what we'll want to do is we're just going to draw the line point to point okay and we'll just put our sort of our arrows on there that's indicates that's our first line then our second line here is we're going to go up to 15 okay and our slope here is negative 3 over 1 okay rise of negative 3 and a run of 1 okay so we drop down three squares each time okay and till we get and run into the other side of the, the x-axis there. Okay, so if you have a ruler, you should be able to get that fairly exact. Okay, if you don't, it's a good idea to plot as many points as you need in order to go from axis to axis. Okay, and then I will draw my line here. Okay, and then there we have our two shapes, or we have our two lines that intersect, and we kind of see a common area. We just haven't figured out where the shading is yet. And then we have our other two equations, which are important, okay? So we have x is greater than or equal to zero, but that means y could be any number, okay? So that means our, um, our line here is x is greater than or equal to zero, and y is any number. So that means we are essentially having a line um, that goes up like this so it's basically it just draws the border of the axes okay the y-axis and then the other one says y is greater than zero that means 
means x can be any number. Okay, so that is going to be defining a horizontal line here. Let's see, I'll just do that a little bit better. Okay, horizontal line here. Okay, and now what we would have to do is look at what our shading is. Okay, so the very first equation here says y is less than a negative one half x plus five. Okay, that means we're going to be shading below the line here. Okay. And then the other one is also y is less than negative 3x plus 15. So that means we're shading also below the line here. So right away you can kind of see where the overlap is. It's this little triangular piece here. And in these other two inequalities, x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, just means that it, it's going to cover all of this, this first quadrant here in this graph that we see. Okay, We're going to take all numbers to the right and all numbers going to the top. So what we end up having is this shape, which is the common overlap point right here. Okay, there's four points where they intersect either the y-axis, the x-axis, or each other. Okay, and then let me just ink that in there. Okay, so this is important here. So that's the shape that we're we're interested in. This is our this is our solution to those four equations. Okay, so what we've got next here is we can write down um, the points. Okay, so we have points zero zero. Then we have points. Um, this one here is uh, five zero, and then we have zero five. Okay, and then this one right here is um, four, four units over and up three. So x is four comma three. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to plug each of those values into our cost equation, okay, in order to figure out what, what we have here. So we can set this up as a simple table. We can do x, okay, we can then do y, and then we look at our cost value. Okay, and remember, we're looking to maximize our costs. So we want to figure out what combination gives us the biggest value here. So we'll plug in 0, 0 first. So 6 times 0 plus 4 times 0. Okay, we put a dude into the equation here is equal to 0. The next one is 5 and 0. So 6 times 5 plus 4 times 0, that's 30. The next one is 0 and 5. So 6 times 0 plus 4 times 5, that's 20. Okay, so so far 30 is the biggest one here, but then we have our last point, 4, 3, which is going to give us 6 times 4 plus 3, oops, not 3, but uh, 4 times 3. So that's 12, 24 plus 12, which is 36. So 36 in this case is our maximum value that we can get when we have these, this particular combination of a four units for X and a four and three units for Y. Okay, so this is like optimizing our sales of something. If X was hot dogs and Y was hamburgers, we would make the most amount of money if we just sold four, four of the hot dogs and three of the hamburgers according to our, our cost equation. Okay, so this is how you approach this question. Okay, um, question B works very, very similar to it. Okay, except you can see in the already the, the, what they're asking you here to do is they're asking you to minimize the value. So they want to find out which is the pair that would give you the least um, amount of cost okay, based on a given equation. Okay, so this is how you want to, you want to set this up. And again, if you have trouble graphing this um, accurately, okay, you should again, jump over to the desmos.com site, okay, and plug those equations in. You can type them in exactly as you see them and you will get all the different shaded areas, okay, and then you will be looking for the overlap, which will give you this exact same shape that you see here. Okay, so that's how, um, that's how you would go through this question. Um, hopefully that helps you out.